welcome to The Reasons I'm Broke. I'm Daniel. And I'm Kelly. And this week we got a good amount of comics. Uh, we got Ultimate Spider-Man from Marvel, which is what we're actually going to start off with. It's based on the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon that's currently running on Disney XD. Uh, this one's Ultimate Spider-Man number six. I really enjoyed it. There's some good art by Ty Templeton in there. And the main story, which I think is the one that we both like the most, is where everyone's hating Spider-Man. And, you know, Spider-Man always goes through that. But here he gets these letters from this post office. They don't know where to send it to, so they keep holding all these Spider-Man letters. And he finally gets all of them. And he reads a couple, shows the appreciation that the that New York City has for Spider-Man. Well, not just New York City, but I think it spans everywhere because he's got letters from all over the place. But it was the way it was written, it was really powerful. It was really touching, and it gave more of... You felt like Spider-Man was more of a person because you really understood what he was going through and what all this meant to him. Yeah, I was a little doubtful about the series when it first came out. Most of these comics that are based on cartoons aren't too good, but, I mean, we've been seeing some good stuff lately with Ultimate Spider-Man and Adventure Time. That was the only thing we had for Marvel. For DC, we had Ozymandias number three. That's number three of six. In this one, we have Ozymandias fighting with the comedian. It was okay. <laughs> I still... Kame- or, um, Ozymandias is probably my least favorite Watchmen character. I do think this comic is written well, but I just don't like him. Even less than the comedian? You, you like him less than the comedian? I think I do. I just He's too cocky. I don't know. He rubs me the wrong way. Well, I, I really like the issue. Especially because this is the first time that Ozzy Mendez and Dr. Manhattan meet up. And I thought I was waiting for that confrontation between the two, or not confrontation, but. When Ozzy falls in love. <laughs> <laughs> if you read the issue, it kind of seems like Ozzy Mendez fell in love with Dr. Manhattan. But it was still good. Even if you aren't a fan of Ozzy, I would still pick it up. I still enjoy it, even though I don't like Ozzy Mendez. If anything, for the art by Jay Lee, it's gorgeous. It looks great. Next, we have Superman Family Adventures. This is adorable. Is it written and drawn by Art Beltazar? Yeah, it's written by Art Beltazar. He does the covers, and then Franco does everything on the inside. And they both worked on Tiny Titans before they did the Superman Family Adventures. It, I really enjoyed it. I always think their stories are they are very light. They're easy reads, but they're really funny. Yeah, I think they're funny for both adults and children. In this one, you have the purple Superman who comes into Metropolis. It is the uh, the supervillain that absorbs all the superpowers. Uh, he, he makes a, everyone sleepy. He makes everyone sleepy. He's a parasite. And you kind of see their take on the whole thing. And it's really funny because he even supposedly picks up Superman's feelings as well as his powers. And there's a, a second story with Lex Luthor <laughs> trying to work for, <laughs> the, for Daily the Daily Planet. Planet. That was really funny. That was hilarious. It. Yeah, it was really just good. had to fetch coffee the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend it, guys. Pick up Superman Family Adventures. The DC number zeros, there's a couple more this week. Batman the Dark Knight, that is the origin. It's a retelling of the killing of Batman's parents again. I still think it's worth picking up. It is still a retelling, but Batman, you can never get enough of Batman. Yeah, I mean, you see Joe Chill and who he was really, when he killed his parents, and the reasons, kind of, sort of. I don't know. To me, this is not one that I would pick up this week. I, this is my pass, I think, for this week. I would still pick it up, but I would pick up anything Batman. <laughs> and you got I Vampire number zero as well. This one is my pass for this week. I do like the I Vampire series, but I just felt like nothing happened in this one. It didn't make a lot of sense. It was trying to tie into the whole couple issues ago when you had Kane and and what's his name got killed and there was all that madness and it just it didn't all fit together it didn't make sense to me see I liked it because it showed even further that Andrew is a good person and they do it by by having the person that actually turns him into a vampire or rather tries to feed on him I'm not going to spoil the issue but there is a curse where he can't feed on someone that is good and pure good and pure and Andrew Bennett is the person that he chooses to feed on and then you kind of see what comes out of that. That is the number zero, the origin of Andrew Bennett. Next we have Talon number zero. I was really, really excited for this one. What were your thoughts? It was written by Scott Snyder. So I know initially he didn't want to do it. He felt like there wasn't a need for a Talon series. But the more he thought about it, the more he kind of went, well, you know, well, we can go in cool directions with this. Number zero has his 
obviously his origins, as most of the number zeros do, and he was an escape artist who gets recruited by the Court of Owls, and his sense of morality kind of overrides that. It overrides everything that the Court of Owls wants to do. So he kind of breaks away from that in this book, is just him escaping everything, just like he is an escape artist. I thought it was really good. I thought they created a great character. I'm, I don't know how far they can go with it, honestly, exactly. which is what I'm worried about. But even if it was just a one-shot, I think it was a good one-shot. It gave more insight into the owls, that creepy guy with the owl eyebrows. I don't <laughs> know. He scared me. But overall, I thought it was really good. I would definitely pick it up. Yeah, I can't wait for Talon to meet Batman <laughs> the first, the <laughs> the first, first moment. Date. Yeah. <laughs> On the indie side, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This one is number 14. Uh, It is written by Kevin Eastman. He does the covers as well, the cover Bs. This one, it's all about Splinter teaching Raphael that killing isn't something that you do. It's something that won't help you. And it all goes into Casey Jones' father, who beats him to the point where he almost kills him. Raphael can't take it anymore. We saw it in the past issue. And in this one... It starts with Splinter going, if I kill him, will that make you feel better? Is that really what you want? And you see this relationship between Raphael and Splinter that we don't see too often. Really recommend it, guys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a really good series. Next, we have Adventure Time number eight. Amazing. <laughs> Again, we we promote Adventure Time all the time. It's a great series. If you don't have it, pick it up. I don't care if you start from number eight. I'd rather you go back and start from number one. But this one keeps with the same same momentum as all the rest. It's getting towards the end of the arc that they're doing right now where Finn and Jake get teleported into the future where they're fighting an army, a robot army of themselves. Craziness. Yeah, I'm still going to say it's funnier than the show. There's some good stuff happening here. It, it knows that the time travel story is ridiculous and it works <laughs> with it. There's some really good jokes here, and the art is great. You see future Finn and Jake. They are a riot. <laughs> They're building a time machine and somehow being lazy about it. It's really good. It's that good that was probably my favorite part of the whole comic is when they're like, well, we need this time machine. Yeah. And it was really clever. I don't want to spoil it for anybody because it was that good. Yeah. Uh, we also had the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. This is a 48-page issue. Uh, this was number 18. I can't believe they already have this many. It's like the show. It just keeps going. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally, I haven't liked the past couple of Treehouse of Horrors. I gave this one a shot. I really, really liked it. Worth the art it. is really good. There's some um, really good jokes between Smithers and, uh, and <laughs> Mr. Burns. <laughs> Smitherina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are three great stories. I think it's three, three stories mm-hmm. in there. And one of them is uh, Rosemary's Baby. You have like a Bartman in the back, which is obviously like Batman, and really good guys. There are four stories. Were there four? Yeah, you got four stories because you had the one with the cabin and the chainsaw, which was hilarious. <laughs> totally what white people do. <laughs> and then you had Bartman, and you had Marge Mary's baby, and Bride of Frankenstein was the last one. Oh yeah, that's they're right. They're on the bar. Yeah, That one I didn't think was as great, but the three of the rest of them completely make it worth it. Yeah, it's good stuff. Now, on the other hand, Bart Simpson, number 75. It has a cover of Bart drawing Angry Dad, if you all remember. That was a couple seasons ago. I was a little bit fooled. You know, I flipped through it. And I'm like, this isn't about Angry Dad. But, I mean, it's just a cover. It's there to draw you in. But the story itself with Bart trying to ask one of the girls in his classroom out to one of the dances so that he can get an A on his next assignment... It's it's good, but it's it wasn't very funny. Nelson is his main competitor, and from the very beginning, you know that neither of them are going to end up with this girl. Someone else is going to end up with the A that doesn't deserve it. And I'm going to say pass on Bart Simpson number 75. But overall, Bart Simpson series is pretty good. And finally, Star Trek The Next Generation and Doctor Who. This one is number five in the series. I'm not big on Doctor Who. I'm sorry, <laughs> everyone out there that is. I do like Next Gen, though. And that's why I'm reading it. And the entire issue is the doctor trying to convince Picard to get a hold of the Borg and somehow compromise with them. And even me, who who watched all season, all the seasons of The Next Generation, I'm sitting here going, no, <laughs> do not you talk to the Borg. <laughs> they Run will away. not work with you. So I'm, I'm agreeing with Picard. And then finally the doctor shows him 
a future in which things are different. And Picard's like, well, all right, fine. No, we Picard try. wouldn't do that. Who <laughs> wrote this? I protest. Now, we got some good trades as well this week. Uh, if you want to go ahead and talk about Avatar. Yes. Avatar, The Last Airbender, The Promise, Part 3. It What they're doing right now is bridging the gap between The Last Airbender and Korra. And I think they have been phenomenal. I'm a huge Avatar The Last Airbender fan, and it's terrible. But this was, it was amazing. I know you haven't read it yet, but. Right. Maybe I'll talk about it next week. But Part 1 and 2 have been really good. I don't know if you want to tell them what's coming after this. Part three is the last of the three book series. Right. And I was all disappointed, but you flip to the back and it says finding Zuko's mom in March. And then it was just this whole, I think I screamed in the middle of Starbucks (laughs) and drew attention to myself. But this, the series has been great. I don't know if they're going to come out with a trade. If they do, it's definitely worth picking up. Right. I don't think they'll ever animate these. That'd be awesome. That would be amazing. But the book is really good. It's the next best thing to the show. If you wanted more Avatar... I mean, this is it right there. Absolutely. If you're not a fan of Korra, again, this is great. And if you are, read this. <laughs> right. It's And also, if you're worried about, because I don't know if it's the same writers of the show. I don't think it is. But all the characters are spot on. It stays very true to what I think would actually happen if they had continued the show another season or two. And I went ahead and picked up Swamp Thing. This is the trade volume one for the new 52. It's called Raise Them Bones. And I really enjoyed it. It's good. I liked it a lot more than the Aquaman. There's this really, really good splash page um, somewhere near the end. And there's and the whole page is split down the middle, and you have the rot and all the plants, the green, on the other side. And the art is phenomenal. The writing is great. Again, Scott Snyder, he's, he's, doing, he's hitting it out of the park in most of the stuff he's writing. I'm going to do Animal Man next. That'll be the next series, next trade I Animal pick up. Animal Man! <laughs> For those of you who watch the DC Nation show. Yeah, let's talk about that. We saw two of the episodes, mm-hmm. uh, Young Justice and Green Lantern, Green Lantern the animated series. Yeah. I thought they began well. Green Lantern was really funny. I got all excited because Hal Jordan, if any of you have watched it, he's been off for how many months? A really long time. Right. In the far reaches of the galaxy fighting the Red Lanterns. And he comes home and he lost his job at the Air Force and he loses his girlfriend and he's out saving some people, and another Green Lantern shows up. And my heart skipped a beat, and I went, oh, no, John Stewart. And it wasn't. It was... Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner. Yeah. But I still... I would never liked his character in the comics. I do like it here. Yeah, they... Guy Gardner is really funny in this. <laughs> Green Lantern, the animated series, was my favorite of the two episodes that we saw, Young Justice and this other one. Young Justice was probably my favorite. You liked it? I did. I liked Young Justice a lot. What I like about it was the first season was very, I won't say it was super lighthearted, but it was more for kids. And then, what was it, halfway through the season, suddenly we're five years in the future and people are dying. (laughs) It's, I thought they made it grow up really fast, and I don't know if it's because more adults were watching it, but I find that commendable for a cartoon. Yeah, DC Nation's been awesome overall. Just like DC's direct-to-video movies, you know, they can do that really well. They can do the cartoons. They can do the uh, cartoon movies. And they've got great storytelling. The animation's always phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of which, The Dark Knight Returns, again, that did come out. I haven't seen it yet. Give me a couple weeks. You know, <laughs> i got to save up. <laughs> i got to somehow try to track down a copy. But DC Nation, if you guys aren't checking it out, Green Lantern, the animated series. If you're a fan of Batman, the animated series, the art is by Bruce Timm. So you see, you know, the square faces, the big bodies and it looks really good i I was a little skeptical when it was first rendered rendered in computer animation but you know i've gotten used to it i think it looks really nice right it does and it's had a great story too if you guys missed the first season try and find it someplace because that first season was great and i'm excited for what they're gonna do with the next one yep i'm coming up uh, next week for gaming we got nba 2k 13 for both the xbox 360 and the playstation 3 That's going to be uh, really good, especially with the cancellation of NBA Live. That's going to be the basketball game. you got the All-Star game, the current Dream Team, and from the 90s. So you're going to see Michael Jordan go up against Kobe Bryant. (laughs) Uh, You also got Nights in the Dreams coming out on the PlayStation 3. Little King's Story on the PlayStation Vita. Sonic Adventure 2 HD on the PlayStation 3 as well. That's going to be uh, for the PlayStation Network store. Uh, You're probably pretty excited for that, Sonic Adventure 2. I love Sonic Adventure 2. And Sonic XD. I know I pick bad Sonic games. Can't help it. 
And the other one is Resident Evil 6 for the 360 and the PlayStation 3. I'm not one that goes by demos, but I was playing that when I downloaded it. I'm not a fan. I really didn't like it. I put it on Twitter, you know, everyone skip out on it, save your money, put it towards something else that you have coming out. The controls are really stiff. I don't know what, why they changed it, if they did, the engine from Resident Evil 4 or 5 even. And this one feels, real again, really stiff. You got your melee combat at any time instead of when you stagger the zombie or the enemy. That's when you get the prompt of, you know, kick them or... Smash them in the head. Yeah, smash them in the head with your knife and all that. And here you just, it's really sloppy. I mean, I don't know what they did. Well, I won't lose you for weeks, so I guess it all works out. <laughs> also, guys, not out this week, but out next week. Pokemon Black and White 2. If you don't have that pre-ordered, get it pre-ordered. When it comes out, you are not going to be able to find a copy. <laughs> we have three copies pre-ordered. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be plenty, but... <laughs> no, there never is. There's never enough Pokemon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's all we have for this week. Uh, we're going to see Taken 2 by the next podcast. Mm-hmm. You will have known. Either Taken 2 or Frank and Weenie. Most likely Taken 2, if not both. Both. And uh, again, find us on Twitter. Let us know what made you broke this week. That's at Reasons I'm Broke, hashtag Reasons I'm Broke. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, in the description, I put the RSS code. If you want to follow us on iTunes, uh, there's a way to do it. You just go to Advanced, subscribe to Podcast, and just put that exact code, copy and paste it on there, and you can automatically download the podcasts every week. I'm still working on trying to get it on the iTunes store, but for now, that's something you can do. If you're watching this on YouTube, again, thank you very much. Let us know how we can improve the show. Thank you for the views. Uh, just keep listening. We're, you know, I, I feel like we're only going to get better and better from here on out as we learn, make mistakes, listen to you guys. <laughs> and again, any contests that you feel like we should do, like maybe give away a book of the month to uh, a couple of people listening. You know, I think... Uh, yeah, some... any, any criticism or tips that you guys have are always welcome. Just throw it up on Twitter. Pop us an email. Yeah, Twitter, email. Um, YouTube, all Mm -hmm. of them work. Once again, Twitter is at Reasons I'm Broke. And that'll do it for this week. Um, I'm Daniel. And I'm Kelly. Thank you for listening. Mm